okay uh welcome back uh, class we are in acts 23 we've seen so far that paul is brought to caesarea under governor felix there is an accusation against him that two things one is that he caused uh, dissension um, among the people in jerusalem the jews particularly and uh, also that he defiled the temple and then you had the defense of paul where he described his work as uh, you know a work which he is doing for god um, and he is just being faithful to what the scriptures have said about you know the hope that we have in god and um, you know the reality of resurrection so now for the people who were listening to him uh, even the high priest resurrection of the dead was not a foreign concept because even if you go back to the earliest book of the bible you know job uh, in chronology when you when you read uh, job did say you know at at one point that uh, one day i'm going to stand before god you know one day uh, i i will i uh, will face my god so even job you see how powerful this is the spirit of god had given him a revelation about resurrection and even in the book of job you know there there is this this uh, uh, belief that one day we are going to rise from the dead so keeping all this in mind bearing this in mind and knowing that his audience which would be um, the high priest the elders and you also had felix they all knew about this so paul's simple issue was like what is wrong don't we all believe this and that's what i'm saying i believe uh, in uh, resurrection and i didn't cause any dissension among the jews so if the governor was sincere man this would have been sufficient to end the trial of paul you know then and there and paul could have gone on on his missionary journey so where are we as far as time is concerned we said that paul completed his third missionary journey uh, around 58 ad so 58 ad is when this whole issue happens in jerusalem the temple uh, area of jerusalem and he is brought to caesarea so he is with felix right now and at 58 ad you know this should have ended the trial should have ended but because felix was not a sincere and a faithful officer uh it is drags so we'll notice that it goes on to about 60 ad two years under the custody of felix felix is sitting on the fence not making a decision even earlier he did not want to make a decision so that's why he said oh you are from cilicia So why did he say you are from Cilicia? That comes under the governance of Felix. Now, if Paul was from another city, Felix would have said, "This is not part of my duty. I will just wait for another leader to come and judge the case." But because Felix had to oversee this case, and Paul was from Cilicia, uh, he he. he just you know went with the motions and did some activities but he never really intended to uh, bring a resolution for this matter so we are at verse 22 of um, acts 24 uh, so can we have a volunteer verse 22 to verse 27 Uh, uh, when Felix I... heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, "When when Lysias the commander comes down, I will make a decision on your case." So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty, and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. And after some and after some days, when Felix came. With his wife Priscilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, "Go away for now, 
when I have convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for, for him more often and conversed with him. But after two years, Porcius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. Yes, thank you, Christopher. Thank you for reading. Uh, as we look at what is happening, you know, it is really a fulfillment of God's promise to Paul. Because uh, uh, I think it was in Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. Could somebody read what God had commissioned him to do? Acts 9 verse 15. Uh, but the Lord said to him, go for he is a chosen vessel for mine to bear my name before gentiles kings and the children of israel yes mm -hmm. yes thank you thank you abhishek so we see that god had a purpose and as paul is journeying with the direction of the holy spirit the purpose is being fulfilled we must recognize that all this is not happening uh, outside of the 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 great plan of God for Paul's life and ministry. It's quite clear, isn't it? What did God say? He's my chosen vessel. He's my chosen vessel to the Gentiles. He's my chosen vessel to minister before kings. That's exactly what's happening. Okay. So Felix, he is a Gentile governor. Why? How do we know that he is Gentile governor? Because in this passage, we saw that he, after some days, brings his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. So he was not Jewish. His wife was Jewish. And since Paul is you know, still hanging around and uh, Felix has not made a decision, he just brings Drusilla to, you know, like, okay, meet this person, Paul, and all his strange teachings and all that. So he brings her over. But Paul never misses an opportunity. See, he's in the prison. Yes, he's definitely in the prison. But prison is an opportunity. Jerusalem, the conflict, the mob violence is an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity for the one who is called. So even now, he can minister to Felix and Drusilla. He already shared you know, about the hope which he has in God earlier. He addresses some other issues or matters when Felix and his wife Drusilla come. What are these? Verse 25 says, he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. Why did he pick these three subjects? to talk to Felix and Drusilla. Why not other subjects right? about salvation? The context is something like Drusilla was somebody else's wife. And Felix had uh, sort of uh, you know, uh, uh, enticed her and all that. And uh, she had come away from her husband. So she was not officially, uh, uh, she, she was still officially married while, while Felix decided to you know, have her. And he married her. Uh, uh, and so it it was not a uh, it was not a morally right thing which Felix did, and Paul, having this in his mind, knew that Felix needed to repent of many things of his corruption of, of uh, you know his uh, insincerity as as an authority figure. But in addition to that, his relationship with Drusilla, and so that's why he talks about righteousness, self control, judgment to come. He's being very uh, clear, you know, as far as the gospel is concerned, as far as, uh, you know, God's holiness is concerned and walk of righteousness is concerned. And Felix doesn't like it. So we are told in verse 25 itself, Felix was afraid and answered, go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. You know, the Bible very beautifully puts it. Even when you look at uh, Hebrews, it says, today is the day of salvation. You know, salvation 
is is never something which we should put away as far as possible you know if if we are able to bring people to that place of decision and when i say bring people i'm not saying hook or crook led by the holy spirit you know like for example paul preached uh, sorry peter preached on the uh, day, day of pentecost when the holy spirit was poured out and 3000 people got saved the very same day you know they asked okay what should we do and uh, uh, he led them to salvation they were baptized on the same day so when we share the gospel of the lord jesus we must expect that today people will turn to christ don't wait for tomorrow look at felix how how sad to hear what he said he when i have a convenient time what is a convenient time to respond to the truth of the gospel do we need a convenient time to respond to the truth of the gospel so you know as a minister of god i'm sure paul did his his best to share the gospel as clearly uh, with conviction you know uh, as possible and uh, now it was felix's turn and his choice to respond to it but unfortunately though paul did his part speaking to kings god had said so governor felix he had the opportunity to share and his wife but felix was the one and his response was very cold uh or maybe not cold but he was just afraid uh, and convicted that what he had done was not right in the first place okay uh, and so uh, felix never made a decision for christ he just said uh, uh, when i have a convenient time i will call you uh, and uh, verse 26 meanwhile he also hoped that money would be given him by paul remember i mentioned this to us he was corrupt so that's why he's dragging the uh, issue that he might release him therefore he sent for him more often and conversed with him so felix was talking to him on and off not with the intention of knowing about god but more with the intention of okay if i keep chatting with this person maybe he will give me some money uh, and uh, with that i can i can let him go uh so it wasn't a pleasant thing that was going on but the beauty of this is that paul being under custody verse 23 says felix knew that he's an innocent man and that is why he had told the centurion to keep paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him so our understanding is Paul is in the prison he is under pressure because he's going through a trial but active ministry would have been happening even in the prison of uh, Caesarea okay obviously because Paul had the liberty yeah he's not traveling here and there but i'm sure his friends many friends would have come he would have taught the bible uh, taught the word of god and equipped will continue to serve uh, in the in the ministry of god but not physically exerting himself the way he exerted in the first three missionary journeys so um, the last verse of this chapter says after two years portius festus succeeded felix so now there was an automatic change of uh, authority so from felix another gentile ruler or governor was um uh, put in place by the name of festus okay um and felix when he left he knew paul was innocent so that's why he could have taken the money and let him go but since paul did not pay him uh, he thought okay i might as well do the jews a favor the jews hated paul right they just hated him and so he thought if i keep him in prison i have a good name among the jews and that's what he did he left him under custody so let's uh, jump now to acts 25 and see what happens under festus okay so uh, abhishek would you be able to read from verse 1 to 12 uh, yes sure pastor yeah go ahead uh, chapter 25 now when festus had come to the province after 3 days he went up from 
Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief man of the Jews informed him against Paul, and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him, that he would summon him to Jerusalem, while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. But Festus answered uh, that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself was going there shortly. Therefore, he said, Let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And when he had remained among them more than ten days, he went down to Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul to be brought. And when he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove, while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning this thing? So Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you very well know. For if I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying. But if there is nothing in this thing of which this man accuses me, no can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Abhishek, for reading that. So, uh, once again, you know, Paul's trial continues. So, who is Festus? I, I mentioned he's uh, again a Gentile governor. And uh, he seems to be a very proactive, energetic governor uh, and likely to be a sincere personality as well. So as soon as he became the governor, uh, what did he do? After three days, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. So he's quite enthusiastic about his tasks and assignments. Uh, he wants to bring a conclusion to this matter of uh, Paul's accusation. So he goes to Jerusalem over there. He finds that even after two years, can you imagine two years have passed by and we would think that in two years, people will calm down, isn't it? Uh, they hated Paul, but in two years, maybe uh, they will not react uh, with the kind of fury that they had you know, two years ago, but somehow the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul and they petitioned him. So they never forgot about Paul and the entire time they are waiting to get him. So as soon as the leadership changed, uh, they thought, OK, let's let's uh, get favor from Festus uh, and, uh, you know, we'll we'll even kill him. We'll figure out a way. We'll tell him, you bring this man, Paul, to Jerusalem. And on the way, let's just kill Paul. And, uh, you know, we, we are done with Paul. But maybe it was uh, intuition or uh, his, his sincerity to, to uh, his conscience, you could say, because we don't know what kind of faith he had. Maybe just his conscience that he wanted to do the right thing. And he figured out that something is off. If I bring Paul here, uh, I don't know what's going to happen to him. So how about calling these leaders to Caesarea and let's talk, let's discuss and conclude you know, about Paul. So he invites them. He says, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. So that's what he does. He comes uh, to Caesarea. Uh, after 10 days. So this is all like quickly, quickly, he's trying to do it. He's not dragging like Felix. So after 10 days, he comes, he's on the judgment seat. And uh, he asks, OK, what are the accusations uh, against Paul? And they start charging him with serious complaints, none of which they could 
actually prove you know it really challenges us as believers it challenges us as uh, ministers of god that having so many people in authority what are they all doing for 2 years plus trying to search okay what did this guy do that we can nail him with that but they're not finding anything so how did he live his life it's amazing it's amazing no wonder he stated my conscience is clear it's clear before god it's clear before man so he did the best he knew to walk in the righteous path and how boldly i don't know how many people could claim uh, uh, what uh, paul actually said i'll just read out his statement verse 8 he says neither against the law of the jews nor against the temple nor against caesar have i offended in anything at all so he says to the religious people or to the law upholders of the land nobody i have nothing i have not offended anyone so you know i don't know what all this is about so anyway festus with his intention to solve the problem he's like okay whatever it is we've got to figure this out it's dragging too long so he gives him an option and he says are you willing to go up to jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning these things so he was like okay why not try what the jews suggested let's all go to jerusalem and at that moment paul knew that you see how he's trying to escape death it's just wisdom if we can avoid persecution and opposition and you know death uh, uh, due to persecution why not avoid it so he's trying to avoid it it's he's not walking into the the mouth of the lion anywhere isn't it so that's also something we can keep in mind when we serve god when we do ministry we work in such a way that uh, we don't bring we don't raise opposition against us that is one if we can escape the opposition why not so he's trying to escape it if i go to jerusalem definitely it's going to be a bad scene so his wisdom of course he's a learned man right he knows the law of the land so he says you know what just stop your discussions and your effort to solve the matter how about you know i go straight to caesar now this is again really amazing see we've got to know the laws of the land paul knew it he knew okay what does what does do the laws offer me and he makes use of it for a roman citizen if a case was not decided among the leaders he could directly appeal to the highest authority you know something like today we would equate it to the supreme court of our nation so he thought okay let's just go to caesar enough is enough and he appeals to caesar and the moment he appeals to caesar him being a roman citizen festus says okay you have appealed to caesar to caesar you shall go the decision is made Festus is not going to uh, preside over this case. Okay, so we'll uh, read on from verse thirteen and see who else comes to visit Paul. But in the meantime, um, uh, I think Sri Kumar has a question. Yes, Pastor. I have yeah, a Pastor, I want to know. As you said, um, like uh, Paul was trying to, uh, you know, use his wisdom to to uh, avoid the death. Now. he could have stopped himself when the when the prophets have so many times prophesied you know um, uh prophets uh prophesied uh you know this is going to happen so that time itself he could have um, took a wise decision rather than uh getting into such a uh, such a big problem and trying to escape so that was one question why uh, what was the reason behind it right then the paul have paul could have taken that that step when two two three times even if somebody says the prophet comes and says to someone especially today that there is a danger if you go ahead and uh, you know we will take a decision immediately but rather than he just moved ahead and uh, you know he took uh, all the decision and now why he wants to escape from the death thank you pastor that's it So thank you, Shri Kumar. A very uh, um, you know interesting question. Knowing what is coming your way, uh, why couldn't have Paul have escaped it? Uh, 
initially then. So, see, we have to weigh between the assignment uh, and the trials. Okay. So, in this situation, yes, there were trials. And if Paul really wanted, he could have escaped them. But he also has to look at his future with his assignment in mind. God had an assignment for him, right? We saw like how Acts 9.15 said that he is my chosen vessel. He is going to stand. He is going to minister to the Gentiles, uh, you know, to people in authority. God had already spoken that over his life. So Paul, while weighing the fact that there will be trials and there will also be my assignments, he recognized that in the trial is also my assignment. I will have opportunities to preach Christ. Remember, he preached Christ to the Sanhedrin, at least, you know, began to the Sanhedrin, and then Felix and Drusilla, and now Festus, and then you'll have other people as audience. And now he's saying, I want to go to Caesar. So, and these people, it's so interesting that Jesus died in that region, uh, you know, uh, roughly about 30 years ago. They have no idea who this Jesus is. So there is a world that did not know Christ. And God was giving opportunity to Paul to share Christ. That he did not want to miss. Okay, so Shikuma doesn't make sense. Like we've got to look at uh, the assignment and opportunity and move with that. And if trials come along, uh, those are kind of unavoidable but then if there are trials outside of our kind of you know direct opportunity and assignment yes we can always uh take a detour and keep ourselves safe so uh, that's what i would say and uh, to support this uh, I'm able to think of one scripture i think it's philippines 3 12 where uh, you know paul says that uh, i i'm living for that for which christ jesus has taken a hold of me so there is a reason or an assignment for which, life assignment for which Christ Jesus called Paul. How can he abandon that to be safe? And what's the fun, you know, being safe when you're not living why you were created? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You are right, actually. Thank you. Oh, sure. Thank you. Any, any other comments from others? Okay, so maybe something for us to think about. Uh, wherever possible, Paul did uh, consciously avoid persecution. Uh, let's read now from verse 13. Uh, we could read all the way till verse 27. So anyone else also ready to do this marathon reading? Okay, any takers? Last from where to where? Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, this, the passage is from Acts 25, verses 13 through 27. Shikuma, can we let Susan read it? Because I think you read one sure. section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. yeah, Susan, you can go, please. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. And after certain days, King. Agrippa and Bernice came into Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Phoenix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priest and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die, before that, he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come there, when they were come here without any delay on the morrow, morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. 
against whom when the accusers stood up they brought none accusation of such things as i supposed but had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one jesus which was dead whom paul affirmed to be alive and because i doubted of such manner of questions i asked him whether he would go to jerusalem and there he judged of these matters but when paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of augustus i commanded him to be kept till i might send him to caesar then agrippa said unto festus i would also hear the man myself tomorrow said he you shall hear him and on the morrow when agrippa was come and bernice with great pomp and was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city at festus commandment paul was brought forth and festus said king agrippa and all men which are here present with us you see this man about whom all the multitude of the jews have dealt with me both at jerusalem and also here crying that he ought not to live any longer but when i found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself had appealed to augustus that i have determined to send him of whom i have no certain thing to write unto my lord wherefore i have brought him forth before you and specially before you o king agrippa that after examination had i might have somewhat to write for it seems to me unreasonable to send the prisoner and not not indicate the crimes laid against him yes, thank you susan thank you for reading that uh, rather long uh, section there uh, so here we have the introduction of another individual this is agrippa and king agrippa so there were governors but there were also kings over regions the important thing about agrippa is agrippa uh, is part of the family of herod so there was a, a relationship that the herod family uh, you know had with jesus and the believers if we recall you know his great grandfather Agrippa's great uh, uh, grandfather was the one who um, uh, had the decree you know, of of all like the two year old male children uh, to be killed. So uh, that was his great grandfather. His grandfather was the one who asked for the head of uh, John the Baptist. Okay, and uh, his father was the one. In Acts twelve. We remember that uh, he killed James, the then leader of the church. So. he is coming from that dynasty what can you expect what decision can you expect from uh, uh, agrippa the second uh, agrippa the second is, is the king that we are talking about so since he was visiting caesarea uh, while festus was there this was the issue that festus had nothing concrete in this case there is the accusation of the jews uh, without any evidence Paul is saying, "No, I, I am innocent." And Paul has now appealed to Caesar. How do we send him to Caesar without even mentioning what the matter is? Because you see, Felix dragged for two years, procrastinated on the decision. Festus is trying to resolve it in a matter of days, but there's nothing to resolve. So it's kind of shameful. uh what will the higher authorities think about festus if he says okay here is the person and uh, there is no charge against him but he is in prison uh do something you know that that sounds very unreasonable and so he thought okay since agrippa is visiting us why not present paul to agrippa and uh, let's see let him bring forth the matter and let agrippa who's the king who probably has seen many such cases give us a uh, you know a, give us a judgment we can go into the letter that we write to caesar before we send paul so here is the other thing about agrippa so they decide all this and they they say okay come on let's uh, meet very next day and he comes with bernice Okay, Bernice. Now, 
there isn't much that Luke is writing about. He didn't write about Drusilla or about Bernice. But you know, here what's happening is uh, even Agrippa, uh, he was not, you know, upholding the the laws of morality in his own uh, in his own community. So there were rumors that Bernice was his sister. So it was it was a sexually immoral relationship, and it was what you call as an incestuous relationship, which Agrippa had with Bernice. Uh, but since he was the king, you know, everyone was, what can you do? And uh, this was out there in the open, and uh, you know things were just going on um, as it is. But you know these were all serious matters these were all serious matters uh, however because of his position uh, you know he he says okay let's meet with paul and the next day we are told that they plan for uh, a gathering in the auditorium they use words like uh, um, great pomp when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium, verse 23, with the commanders and the prominent men of the city at Festus's command, Paul was brought in. So, similar, just in line with what Sri Kumar asked us, he said, there are dangers to Paul's life uh, in what is happening. But do we realize that as Paul is going to speak now, he has the audience of Two Gentile, um, you know, authority figures. There is Governor Festus, King Agrippa, and you also have many other commanders and prominent men of the city. So it is a fulfillment of what God had promised and said. That Paul, he is going to stand before kings and people of authority to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's like God is giving him the setting. He does not have to go looking for it or searching for it. But the audience is there now. Okay, In the auditorium, they're all there. He just has to speak. And hopefully, through that message, you know, uh, people will turn to Christ. So that's what happened. Um, and uh, Festus presents. The case, he says, King Agrippa in verse 24, uh, and all the men who are here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me, but both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing deserving of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. So, you know, in his own words, it's sort of contradictory prisoner but festus is saying i didn't find anything wrong with him okay worthy of death. then later on he goes to explain that because my examination has not unearthed charges how about you know agrippa hear him out and uh, let's see if we have some charges with those charges we are going to send paul so this is like a moment paul is waiting for he always loves audience okay so he now will take the opportunity to share the gospel with the people and also recognize that acts chapter 9 acts chapter 21 and acts chapter 26 are passages where we are able to construct the uh the information about this man called paul so many other small details is going to share here so uh, we can sort of concentrate on that as well so we need another reader uh, acts 26 verses 1 through 11 uh, who would be willing to read this section okay yes okay asha please go ahead So Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I consider myself fortunate that it is to be for you, King Agrippa, 
I am going to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, especially because you are familiar, familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem, is known by all the Jews. They, they have known for a long time. If they are willing to testify, they are going to the strictest party of religion. I have lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial because of my hope in the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our twelve tribes hope to obtain, as they earnestly worship night and day. And for this hope, I am accused by Jews, O King. Why is it thought incredibly by any of you that God raised, raises the dead? I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and I did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up many of the saints in the prison after receiving authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in all the synagogues, and tried to make them blaspheme and enraging fury against them. I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Thank you, Asha. So, you know, details about Paul's life there for us. He says that uh, uh, from the youth, he, uh, he spent the, the manner of life that he had. Uh, he wants to share it with the people. Um, beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. So how come he's saying Jerusalem when he's actually from Tarsus of Cilicia? Because as a religious person, he would have come very often to the city of Jerusalem. And the other Jews also were aware of who he is. Then he uh, makes a statement like, uh, according to the strictest sect of our religion i lived a pharisee that is to tell us that every small thing he could think of in the um, uh, you know the the traditions and the uh, the practices the beliefs of the pharisees he had kept it he had kept it so he was a very very pious and a devoted pharisee and he says uh, that you know now he is being judged. Uh, he's he's also trying to say that what I am walking in right now is a fulfillment of what was introduced to me uh, as a Jew and a Pharisee. So that's what he's saying. You know, as he goes on, verse seven, he says to this promise. What is this promise? What the God had promised to the Jewish people, he is actually walking in those things, but yet. You know, he is accused, he is accused um, uh, uh, of believing in something like resurrection. So in verse 8, he says, why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Because uh, he knows that though Festus and King Agrippa are from a Gentile background, like they are familiar with the beliefs of, uh, uh, you know, the Jews and uh, the fact that God is able and God is greater and he's, um, you know, a raiser of the dead as well. So he describes himself in all these ways and, uh, yeah, right. So basically he has opposition and then we've understood these things. Now he's going to recount his conversion. Okay, He's going to recount his conversion. What we'll do is instead of me trying to explain it we'll just give it a read i think that in itself will uh, help us understand all better so from verse 12 to verse 23 another person she'll read pastor yes brother yeah. well the, while this occupied i journeyed to damascus with the authority and the commission from the chief priests at midday, O King, along the road, I saw a light. I, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than sun, shining around me and those generated me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the ghost. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But raise and stand on your feet, 
or have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things of which you have seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentile to whom I now send you, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Thank you, brother. Brother, you can also uh, continue. You can read from verse 19 to verse 23. Therefore, King Gagripa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly, heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand, witnessing both the small and great, saying no other things than those things which prophets, which prophets and Moses said would come, that Christ would suffer, and he would be, he would be the first to rise from the dead, and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to them. Gentiles. Okay, thank you. So, uh, quite self explanatory there. Paul uh, talking about his encounter with Jesus uh, on the road to Damascus, and he makes it very clear, isn't it? So, he makes it very clear that uh, he heard a voice, and now he is actually following the instructions of. Uh, that voice and the vision that he got. Verse 19 is a very key verse for us where it says, Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So you see his commitment. It's not easy what Paul is doing, you know, be being a witness to so many different people, but it's all about his commitment. Uh, his, um, you know, he has given his life for the call. He's given his life for the heavenly vision. And he says, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. And then he goes on to describe about how uh, his message is regarding repentance, like bringing people to repentance. So uh, we can stop here. And uh, I think it's best to just do uh, the remaining chapters in a proper way and you know close it off in a proper way. We have two and a half uh, chapters left, which definitely we can complete. So uh, let's pray now and close. I uh, would like to request uh, anyone in the batch to please pray. And we pray. This is Charles. Yes, yes, Charles. Please. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for what you are teaching us. Lord, we pray that you will continue to give us the ability to put in practice, but also to continue to depend on you for any other further explanation where we might have not understood that in the coming days we will be able <coughs> to, to radiate your glory as your name is glorified on earth, our good in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Charles, and thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, we shall meet again next week. So please do join the class. See you next week. Mm -hmm.